Welcome to All Things Flamingo Podcast with the Flamingo Group and myself, Beth Riley. Join us as we discuss all things to do with our community, real estate, and all things Flamingo. Welcome and tune in for a flocking good time. Well, hello, hello, hello. Hi, Jason. How are you today? I'm good, Beth. How are you? It's great to see you. Nice to see you too. And Jason Macbeth is with Renovation Cells. And as we get into it, you can really see where this makes a difference in selling houses in pretty much a new market. So if I go into real estate a little bit, I'll talk about how important his company is and how important it is that he and I are starting to partner together, or we have partnered together in different projects to make houses really sellable. Um, The market's changed. Welcome to the new world. We have more and more houses coming on the market. And I will talk more about Bloomington. Um, Bloomington has a lot of outdated homes. So what's happening is that people are walking into these listings and they're like, yeah, great location, great neighborhood, nice bones, but the kitchen needs to be updated. The bathrooms need to be updated. I, I the house feels closed in. Everything's needs work. Um, so this is really where Jason, you come in and you can help people. It's not so much renovation as it is just giving it a whole. It is renovation, but it gives it a whole fresh new look on a house, so they don't feel so inundated that they have to put in a sixty thousand dollar kitchen or redo a master bath to the point where it's like you know, we just paid for a house. I can't pay for this too. So I'm very excited to hear about your business um, and to learn more and have people learn more about how renovation sells and how it works. Awesome. Well, I'm looking forward to it as well. You know, I think that you hit the nail on the head, Beth, Beth, that the market is changing. And when you think about what buyers are looking for, they, they're looking for turnkey houses. You know, the days of maybe DIY or um, purchasing a house and thinking about all the projects you need to go. In a lot of cases, that those have changed. People want that turnkey. They want that modern, refreshed look. And when you think about homes in the Bloomington market, you're exactly right. That many of them um, may seem a little bit dated, but they've got great bones. And we can just provide this simple refresh to make that house look like what the buyer is, is looking for. Yeah, and I know we didn't really introduce you very much, um, but before that, why don't you go ahead and talk a little bit of how you got to this, how you got to um, get into renovation cells and uh, why it's important to you. Yeah, absolutely. Um, You see on the screen a a couple of photos, and I I like to think about this as a little bit of my why, but uh, my name is Jason McBeth, and um, how I got into renovation cells is I spent a lot of years, 13 years, uh, creating solutions in the healthcare industry, really designed to help um, improve health of employees uh, uh, as a part of an employer. When I thought about those designs and those solutions that I was offering, they were really focused on the individual. What really shifted and what I think has really translated to renovation cells is exactly that. I'm thinking about that individual homeowner thinking about a solution and a design that can help them to maximize their existing space, minimize their time on the market in this case of a a sale situation. Um, It's really a a unique challenge and a unique opportunity as this market has evolved. A little bit about me, I've lived in the Eden Prairie for uh, a little over 20 years now. I've got two kids, uh, one is 20, one is 16. And uh, about three or four years ago, we we finally got a dog. Um, I like to do a lot of <laughs> stuff in the community, um, you know, be really active outside. And and I think these pictures illustrate that a little bit. So you came in and you got into now renovation cells. Is that a franchise or how, what is that? It is a franchise based business. Uh, we were founded um, back in 2018 uh, mm-hmm. in Chicago. And we were founded by a general contractor who'd been working in the Chicago market for many, many years. And he started to see this shift where buyers were starting to want that turnkey renovation. He started to work with a lot of real estate agents in the Chicago market and realized that these simple turnkey refreshes versus your $60,000 full renovation um, Mm -hmm. was really a market niche that was uh, not being met in that market. Um, He built the company for about three years in Chicago, focusing primarily on these turnkey renovations. 
and mm -hmm. decided that it is a successful model and decided to take this national through that franchise based um, business. Uh, right. We made our way uh, across the country over the last couple of years. We now have 42 locations here in uh, Minneapolis. I joined uh, the organization a little over a year ago um, and uh, we're, we're starting to really build our brand in this market. Yeah, I think it's going to take off. I, I, I feel the same pressure that you do um, just from just from the real realtor point of view. This is our mission. You know, it's really designed to simplify that renovation process. When you think about renovations, you know, sometimes you think about expensive, time consuming, disruption yes. to me as a homeowner or, or my family. What we're trying to do is really try to unlock the full potential that's within the home through these these refreshes. And Beth, I think you actually hit the again, you made a great point when you think about real estate agents, realtors, they've had to manage this process and in many cases have had to think about not only how do we market and sell that home, how do we get it ready for get, get it ready for sale? How do I find the painters and the flooring companies and the electricians and things like that? And in many cases, what I find is that's not the real estate agent's skill set. It's not their it's not their sweet spot. They are excellent at marketing and selling that home, but the project management leaves that to me, where I can manage that piece of it with your help. Right? We're a partner. You and I have the exact same goal in that scenario. Really, it's the same goal as the homeowner as well. But how can I take that off your plate? You can focus on what you do, Beth best i focus on what i do best we both have the same goal i am um, learned a lesson i use i use with stagers and stuff like that even to clean houses how and what direction they should go and i i thought everybody comes to me and they ask what paint color should i use what should i do holy moses has anybody looked at how many paint colors there are and what <laughs> happens is even everybody's like well it's beige it's beige uh, of course. So I think it's any old beige. I get the room painted and it has an undertone of green. It looked mm -hmm. terrible. After mm -hmm. I had it repainted. And it was just one of those things where it's like anything, even from paint color, going to a designer, getting the right color. There are colors that sell, period. Um, and the updates have to be in such a way that they're not taste uh, specific, which is a nice way of saying that's what you like, but the rest of the world may not. Right. <laughs> so exactly. um, it's just interesting. The other thing I run into all the time, too, is, well, we'll just do a quick update and Uncle Bob will pay him with a 12 pack and it'll it'll all work out. You know, well, Uncle Bob might have drank the 12 pack, then done the renovation because that's what it looks like to me. And I want to be nice, but they look it looks terrible and it might have been done 20 years ago too that's another thing is that 20 years is not an update it's not <laughs> you and i see this all day every day don't we when we're walking into homes or looking to help support our clients and think about how could we best um achieve that goal it is right. you know it's it's a little bit of the battle of the the diyers or the battle of um, not thinking for, you know, the masses, you know, when you're thinking big about what is the best way to support. Um, right. Uh, We're on a budget. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, these are lovely. Can you tell me a little these, bit about these? Absolutely. These, these are a couple of examples. When I say just a, a refresh or a simple renovation of that home, these are some great examples of a kitchen on the top and a bathroom on the bottom. Kitchens and bathrooms are our two top two projects that we think about. And Beth, I think you'd agree. When we focus on what is the um, the center point of a home, usually it's the kitchen, followed by a primary bathroom. Thinking about those are the those are the items that sell homes. Yep. On yep. the top, when you look at the left and the right, it's a before and after of a kitchen. The first thing you may notice, it's the exact same kitchen. The layout didn't change. The bones of the kitchen didn't change. The stove is in the same spot. The sink is in the same spot. The cabinets are exactly the same. What we did in this uh, kitchen is we painted the existing cabinets. So we changed that um, uh, wood tone uh, cabinet to a little bit more modern, warm, uh, in this case, green tone cabinet. Mm -hmm. We replaced the countertops, those dark black colored countertops. We replaced those with a white you know, really bright, inviting, same with the backsplash, to try to really just 
warm up this existing space. And then the last element you'll notice is lighting and flooring. Um, we, we, in this case, we darkened the flooring a little bit from what it was, um, but it helps to really uh, warm up that kitchen. When you look at the bottom photo. So the bottom ones are before and after also left this to right. Is be yeah, before and after left to right. And you know we had a little bit of a sneak peek, but you're going to see some common themes here as we go through these before and afters. The bottom is a primary bathroom. Just like the kitchen, the layout didn't change. Exactly the same vanity in this case. A uh, couple of elements that did change is we painted the vanity. We put a new top on the vanity. We That's added new thing. with, with wow. new sinks, um, new fixtures. The mirror, the lighting, we changed a couple of those elements and of course replaced the flooring. So, you know, again, you're looking at the exact same space, just refreshing the uh, experience. One thing I know we'll get into a little bit more detail about this in a couple of minutes, but when you think about the time frame on each of these projects, it's about three weeks start to finish construction. Nice. So really shortening that time frame, thinking about we went, you mentioned budget earlier thinking about how can we maximize the dollars that are invested to provide such a dramatic difference that you're seeing on the right. So before we go on, just let's go back. So the kitchen, I like the fact that you put in the countertops. It looks like you put in a farm sink and the new one as the fixtures are gold. Yes. Right? Yes. Yep. Looks like gold. Backsplash makes a huge difference as far as brightness. Um, but they have nice things. It looks like a sub-zero fridge. And I don't know, I can't tell what the oven is, um, but they just painted it. That that looks really nice. What is yeah. what would be the cost on something like this? Uh, yeah. and, and let's take the date of where we are right now. We're in a hyperinflation time period right now. So uh, just for this time period of 2024, approximately what's the what was the price point in this in this kitchen? Yeah, you know, as as you know, Beth, it's always a little bit hard to establish a price point when you don't understand the full scope. But thinking about this kitchen, you know, what this would look like in 2024, I would guess uh, you would pay, anticipate to pay somewhere between thirty and fifty thousand dollars for what we are offering here. Now, to okay. contrast that, if we were to replace all of the cabinets, reconfigure the space, I would anticipate your price tag would be six figures or more. Also, right. your time frame would be much longer than uh, the three week turnaround time frame. One thing that we really think about when I work with with real estate agents and think about particularly homes for sale is profit. If I'm asking for an investment of forty thousand dollars for a kitchen to be renovated, like we're seeing on this slide, the goal mm -hmm. is, is that you have an additional eighty one hundred twenty thousand dollars in your pocket. Um, as a result of these renovations, meaning that that house sold uh, for more money with uh, after the renovations. And then in the bed, the one below is just amazing. It looks like you put up some beadboard where you did have uh, tile. I mean, this this whole thing's tile, tile, tile. Um, this looks like a whole different bathroom did you lift the vanity at all on this or in this case no we didn't um we just uh put new flooring around it what is this an yeah. update in, in this case you know i'll, I'll make a, some of the similar comments you know again we're looking at, at the top left and right a before and after of a kitchen some of the same elements we saw in the previous uh before and after shot with the kitchen we painted the cabinets again replaced the countertops lightened the flooring on the after uh picture new light fixtures um, and the backsplash. Again, thinking about how do we maximize the return on that uh, investment. Mm -hmm. um, with the, the bottom, it's another primary bath example, pretty dark on the left-hand side, some darker tile. Dramatic. Um, dramatic difference by lightening that tile, um, updating the flooring. In this case, we replaced the, uh, the vanity with a new vanity. And we do that in some cases if we think that in this case, it would make such a dramatic difference to have a nice new vanity in the, in that space. On the top one with the kitchen too, uh, you took out all the dated elements, like the little piece over the kitchen window. And then also you added cabinets above everything. Um, they kind of have crown molding on the left. The before picture sort of has crown molding and then it has the cabinet. So you actually added cabinetry all the way around. 
That's a great observation. And that's true. You know, there are certain situations where it makes sense. If you've got those dated crown moldings and things like that, can we add cabinets above just to um, modernize the space? I have a design team. You know, you mentioned earlier, you know, the various colors of beige paint. There are a lot of <laughs> colors out there. I've got a design team. And when we think about what we start defining our scope, we start thinking about what elements are we going to renovate or update in that home. Our design team will make recommendations on removing the dated elements, maybe adding the cabinets like we did in this example, um, and making sure that we're thinking about not only the space that we're, we're focused on in that home, but mm -hmm. how, how does it tie into other areas of the homes that maybe isn't being renovated? How does it fit into the neighborhood that we're working with? Bloomington is different than Eden Prairie, is different than Edina. So we have to think about some of those elements and mm -hmm. make sure we're make, making these recommendations for renovations. We're um, being very strategic about that. Right. And both of these, I really, um, they're lovely. Like the bathroom's great and everything's lovely. What I really can't emphasize enough is that stuff is going to start sitting on the market for yeah. us especially in the Bloomington area, everybody thinks you can just put it up the way it is. It's starting to change dramatically in the sense that we're ready for younger buyers. There's a lot of houses that look a lot more dated than what you're showing right here that we're putting up and they want maximum dollars. And it's just not going to happen. It's not going to happen. We're going to need to start really doing some other work. Adina is completely different. Adina has everything updated, but they also have a lot more on the market. So the competition is quite mm -hmm. different. And of course, the price point is higher. Location's great in Bloomington, but let's snap to it a little bit. <laughs> Couldn't agree more. And it, again, I feel a little bit like a broken record here, but I've got another kitchen on the top, bathroom on the mm -hmm. bottle, bottom, just like the two previous examples. We have the same exact space, same layout. Uh, on the top, we painted, again, painted the cabinetry um and replace the countertops lighten to the flooring um new lighting fixtures um and you can see it's a dramatic difference uh updated the hardware as well on this one on the bottom the kitchen on the, on the i love that kitchen it's so positive i don't know there's something really uh warm and cozy about that i don't know why but it, it very i love the wood floor you did lighten the floor on the kitchen and the the new kitchen mm -hmm. But otherwise, I, have... in, I, I find it interesting because I agree with you, um, you know, and I know everyone has their their own taste. You know, sometimes, you know, I'll show the picture on the left to my, to my wife, for example. She'll say, well, what's wrong with that kitchen on the left? I say mm -hmm. that there doesn't look like there's anything wrong with it. It looks like it's very well kept. It looks like um, some of the peer, some of the elements complement each other. But when you think about a buyer, what's a buyer looking for? They're looking for turnkey. They're looking for modern. They're looking for something that is updated. And that's where the image on the right is much more powerful and really speaks to the elements that you, you were just referring to. The market is changing and this is what buyers are going to demand. Well, and plus that, the thing is, is that just think of the age of the buyers now. Um, the mm -hmm. one on the left is you're going into your mom's kitchen. Mm hmm. And mm -hmm. on the one on the right, you're going into your kitchen. You can visualize and see yourself in that kitchen much better than you can in mom's kitchen. Agree. Yes. So I, I just, it's interesting. I'm, I'm not cutting, let's face it. I have a brown kitchen. What the heck? I mean, it's not <laughs> like I live in a palace or anything, but I just want to help them. I want the, the average seller to come to the, the perception and perception's huge. That's what dictates so much in our society right now. I want the average seller to start seeing, wow, do you know how excited a buyer would be for this? The other thing that's psychologically really changing for the seller is that the seller needs to leave this home. They are leaving this home. They are now looking at it as an asset that needs to be sold, right? And through that change, you start to see it not so much as your house, but as an asset which it is. It's usually somebody's biggest asset. But as they leave that one house, the brown kitchen house, they're leaving the blue and white kitchen. Mm -hmm. And that is a big change that psychologically it does make help the seller say, OK, this is, it's kind of no longer mine. This is now the this is the next person's house. That is a big piece of the conversation, isn't it? 
is mm-hmm. trying to let go of some of you, you know, what, uh, what you have a lot of pride in you as the, the homeowner or the seller have a lot of pride in, um, but to think like a, think like a buyer. Correct. And the same thing. Okay. This is great. Go ahead. So this is just a quick snapshot of really uh, illustrating what we do when we think about, you know, some of the, I'll call them general services. It's focusing on, can we update the lighting? Can we paint walls or trim to really modernize that space? Um, Refreshing the hardwood, like we saw in a couple of those before and afters. We do a lot of work with fireplaces, especially in this market, thinking about how can we refresh that fireplace that may be the center uh, focal point that you see when you walk into the home and carpet. Kitchens and baths, I think we we saw these in the examples, but when we think about kitchen, it's really these five elements, lighting, countertops, painting cabinetry versus replacing cabinetry, uh, flooring, hardware, um, backsplashes are really the key elements that we see over and over again, really maximizing the transformation and minimize at, um, maximizing that transformation. In bathrooms, some of the similar themes come through lighting, maybe tile if we uh, need to update the tile like we saw in that uh, bathroom that was the darker black tile. Vanities and mirrors, we need to replace a lot of mirrors and lighting really trying to change those elements. Um, Plumbing fixtures and hardware, uh, we saw those in the before and afters that these simple elements can make such a dramatic difference. Yeah, they absolutely can. So how does it work? You know, this is really a simple snapshot of how the process works. Beth, you and I really work together on steps one and two. And it's really thinking about as we work with that seller or that homeowner, what is their space? You know, we'll take a tour of that space and try to really narrow down the scope with that lens of how do we maximize the impact, minimize the time on the market and maximize the profit in terms of that net sale. I'll provide an estimate of what that's going to look like. So if we think about where you asked that kitchen question before, what's that going to cost? That's what I'm going to provide to that seller, that homeowner, so they can understand this is what we're going to do. These are the investment that we're going to ask. Step three, we're going to talk about a financing option. So many times when you think about buyers and sellers, they have, they're they're trying to sell their house. They're trying to buy their next house. They may not have the funds that are necessary to achieve the goals that you refer to, Beth. And so if we can provide them a financing option, we can give them up to $80,000 in financing, six months, no interest, no payments. How that works in the real world is a seller will use that financing, invest in the renovations, use the proceeds from the sale of the clothes, sale of the home to pay off the financing. And in that scenario, it costs them nothing. Really great option, about 45% of our clients utilize that option when they think about how do they um, support the investment. The other 55% can use other means, HELOC, savings, family family may offer them some financing. But in those cases, it's just a, um, the the renovations are are paid while we're we're making the, um, uh, doing the work. And uh, that financing option allows you to use proceeds. I mentioned design uh, earlier, and I have a great design team. I've got four experts in design that I have access to, and they will do exactly what I referred to earlier. They'll think about that home in Bloomington. Think about what the comps are in the area. Think about the renovations that we're suggesting. What are we not touching? To really think about what sort of fixtures, finishes are going to make that maximum impact. Where we saw that example earlier, where we had some of those dated Uh, crown moldings and things like that. They're going to make the recommendation that we should um, remove those elements and add cabinetry if that's appropriate. Those first four steps that uh, I referred to in general take about 10 to 14 days from the first meeting until we have our final design available and we can get started on construction. And that's step five, project launch. Um, Project launch will occur about two weeks Uh, after our initial meeting and we've got everything nailed down, lined up, and then we will get to work. So start to finish, our renovations generally are about four to six weeks in duration. Then we've got a couple of examples of results. And here, as we go through these slides, we're going to see a couple of common themes that we've already touched on, Beth. You know, when I think about uh, renovations and think about how do we maximize the value 
I like to use the word profit. I don't know about you, Beth, but I like to use the word profit. I think it's a little bit easier term for many consumers to understand versus ROI. ROI, mm -hmm. even for me, sometimes I think about what does that really mean? Am I talking about a percentage? Um, is that good if I have a 200% ROI? You may, I may not know. But when right. I think about profit, and we'll see this illustrated on the next slide, this is something that's really easy for uh, a consumer or a homeowner to understand. It's really that possibilities. If I have an extra $100,000 in my pocket because I invested in these renovations, my home sold for a much higher value than had I done nothing. I've got $100,000 in my pocket, and that's net after the uh, the renovations. I think that's a huge number. I mean, let's think about that because of what I do net sheets all the time. And a lot of times people will, even though I'm like, okay, so this is what you're, we, there's lots of words here that all kind of mean the same thing. So you're saying an extra 100,000 and I'll say, well, look how much equity you have in your house. Mm -hmm. Okay. And it's to, it, what it means is it's cash in pocket. So mm -hmm. you sell the house, this is money back to you. And when you say extra, that means with this much effort, this is what you're going to get above and beyond what the original thought, if you just leave it the way it is. So you leave your house at Brown Kitchen. Let's just stay with the Brown Kitchen theme. So you leave your house at Brown Kitchen or you go to the Blue and White Kitchen. The Blue and White Kitchen you're going to get, even though you just put let's say $40,000. I don't know what you put into that. Let's say you put $40,000 in, you might sell this house for $100,000 more than originally thought. So that's $60,000 more, whatever you, however you want to look at it. But the point is, is that it's, it's making your house more appealing and people will pay more. They will pay more for your house. Absolutely. Couldn't agree more. And we're going to see a couple of examples of that in just a minute. This last, this next slide, um, this is a great example. When you think about that extra $100,000, what could you do with that? You know, what does that offer to you? Does that additional equity that's already in your existing home, but now is in your pocket, you can use that on your next home for furnishings. You can pay off some other loans that are out there. You can uh, renovate your new home if that's something that's of interest and we can help from that perspective. Same process. We have had situations where we've renovated a seller's home. They purchase that next home and we come in and we help them to make these transformations in their new home. Um, vacations, you know, use that extra hundred thousand dollars to take a once in a lifetime vacation. There are lots of possibilities, but really thinking about it a little bit differently that yes, it's an investment, but to your point, the additional profit that you're earning on the sale of your home can be used in a lot of different ways. So here's that example, Beth, the brown to the blue um, kitchen. You know, and this is this is a great example, again, where we just did some simple things, lightened the floor, updated the countertops, painted all the cabinetry, updated the, uh, the backsplash, new lighting. Um, this is the example where had they done nothing in this example, the as is price would have been right around $775,000. This homeowner to do this kitchen uh, invested just under $47,000. As a result, that new list price was just was $899, just under $900,000. It wow. ended, up, ended up selling for $950. If you do the math, that is $128,000 net profit. That had they not done these investments, that $128 would not have been in their pocket. This next example, another kitchen, um, and I and I like to show that you know that first example was a high, you know, the upper end of the bracket. We certainly don't serve um, only some sections of the market. Thank you. Really, yeah, exactly like you, Beth. You know, no home is too small or too large. This one had an example where it would have been listed at two eighty five. Um, had they done nothing, they invested twenty nine thousand and sold it for three twenty five. So eleven thousand dollars in their pocket had they done nothing that eleven thousand dollars would not have been in their pocket they couldn't have taken a vacation um and it may all of the other elements that you talked about earlier in today's market well speed to sell Huge. speed to sell exactly yep. again we're playing with the person we're playing with some of the uh with speed to sell the perception is the longer houses on the market there's something wrong with it and what's mm -hmm. happened especially this last decade has just been 
really, I averaged on my houses four days on the market. Mm -hmm. Now we're stretching. We're starting to yep. go 20, 25, 30. Really, in the world of real estate, that's nothing. <laughs> that's, that's not silly. very long. But I think that the expectations of buyers and sellers, well, sellers more than buyers, is that they're starting to, there's perceptions that are changing. And that is, as st houses still sell, boom, within a day, two days. But I can guarantee you it's because it's it's been renovated. I, I, I agree. I mean, I, I know you and I are looking at a lot of the same data points. And, and I think you're right. The last decade or so, you know, we've seen an anomaly with four yeah. or five days on the market, 20 days is still a pretty good turnaround, but you know, it's just, it's changing. Um, and right. we need to adapt to those changes. So the speed to sell is much faster in the renovated home. And it has to be priced correctly. You don't overprice a house because the kitchen has been renovated. You price it according to what the market will hold. And that's, um, but I, let's face it, if you price it even at a regular rate, the market is so hungry for fresh looking renovated homes that if you price it just even a little bit below the mark the market price just a teeny bit you're going to have a, an auction effect mm -hmm. in the right neighborhood in the neighborhood so yeah just that's just where our partnership is so right. important beth is that when i think about how do i best support and serve real estate agents our partnership is key you know we are on the same page on all of those elements Another testimonial, you know, I'm really proud of some of these testimonials that I've received. This is a homeowner um, that just mentioned about, you know, as professional, helpful and honest, you know, those are some key words that, you know, I strive for in my, my background in healthcare, you know, those were really important to me, carrying these forward to um, renovations and partnering with real estate agents. You know, it's really important to me to have a great business model that makes it really easy for that homeowner um, and the real estate agent um, and all parties involved. One more example, uh, maybe a little bit at the midpoint, uh, a little bit of the upper side again, but just thinking about this kitchen, you look at the small image in the center, uh, some, um, it looks like tile floor in this example, um, some darker color cabinets um, uh, and countertops, et cetera. Had they done nothing, would have listed it for 625. They invested 60,000 for these renovations in this example and ended up selling that home for $30,000 over the new list price. Uh, at the end of the day, they had $145,000 of additional profit um, net of the $60,000 they had invested. One more testimonial, just the idea here is making this process as fast and as simple as possible is really the key um, here. Nice. Throughout this conversation, Beth, we've talked a lot about the selling side of the equation um, and thinking about how do we renovate homes to maximize the the sale price, minimize the time on the market, all of those elements we've touched on a couple of times. But that's not all we do with renovation sales. We also think about the buyer side of the equation, or in some cases, just you and I as homeowners, our dark brown kitchens. If we are just tired of looking at that dark brown kitchen, but you don't want to go through the time, the expense, the disruption of a full scale renovation, meaning tearing things out, Think about how can we renovate that space to just transform the experience exactly like we've been talking about. This was a homeowner project where they just wanted to work with us and think about, again, the brown, darker kitchen and modernizing, brightening that up. $30,000 investment took about three weeks for us to uh, complete this project. Um, and it was a full refresh. I, I love testimonials and, and that's why you're seeing a couple of these. Um, this was from one of these homeowners that we worked with just talking about they had three kids uh, recently moved. They needed someone that could do it all. And that's what renovation sales offers. We do it all. We manage the design process. We manage the entire construction process. That financing al element is a value add that we can offer. So really thinking about how do we support them from start to finish? And they really loved that this was just easy, finishing just a couple of weeks, um, especially with their busy family, um, and truly make their house a home. Well, and look at three little kids. Holy cow, I can't imagine. You know, that's you, such a busy time in your life. And the last thing you want to do is deal with, I don't know about the design. I mean, design is something you need to think about quite a bit because um, mm -hmm. you have to think of the functionality of it, things like that. So that's, yeah. That is a great solution. 
I remember when uh, my kids were a little bit older than then the, the Magooies, but um, my kids were pretty young. We went through a kitchen renovation um, around that time. And mm -hmm. I want to say it was about four months. And that four months was extremely trying. Just having having a couple little kids running around the house, you can't, that entire heart of your home is disrupted. There's a lot of dust, there's plastic and other things kind of blocking things off. But um, to do something much faster um, is such a benefit that we can offer to uh, busy families like uh, the Magooies or me in my case. Absolutely. Well, thank you. So what else? We have the renovate and stay. Okay. You did a mud room, just made things consistent throughout the house is what that looks like. And that that's lovely. Absolutely. Yep. Great. Simple example. So how do we get in touch with you? So this is me. This is my contact information. Um, certainly have my website, renovationcells.com. You'll search for me. Um, just look for Southwest Minneapolis, and you will have all of my contact information. Of course, you've got my QR code and phone number and email address here as well, as well as my uh, Instagram handle. So a number of different ways to get in touch with me. I'd love to have a conversation on how I can best support uh, real estate agents and homeowners to make their dreams come true. Well, thank you so much. I know that we'll be working together more and this has been, um, it's a great, I agree with the contractor. This is definitely the direction we're going with real estate is we will be doing more uh, almost renovations right before you sell and it is profitable. When you have that big of a chasm between the brown kitchen, the tile floor, what you just showed there to what is happening on the other end, it's a huge difference in the pay and also really that's what the market's asking for. He's absolutely right. And it's happening again and again. Now I will come back to Bloomington. Bloomington is older than Eden Prairie and it, it is showing in our houses. And we stay in our houses longer here. This has a lower turn rate than other suburbs. I mean, the higher the turn rate, the younger people move in, they change houses faster. This is not happening here. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. People live here forever. And so when they leave or they want to leave, the house is tired. So I think many times you might also be coming in right after the house is sold and see how we can do it that way. But you do have a lot of different options. Thank you so much, Jason. This has been a pleasure and I look forward to working with you more. Likewise. Thanks so much for having me, Beth. This has been great. Thank you. And also, my name is Beth Riley. I am with All Things Flamingo Podcast, but we also are the Flamingo Group. We do sell outside of Bloomington throughout the whole metro area. And we have a team that will help you uh, buy or sell your home. So thank you for your time and all things go for the flamingos. <laughs>